Hello everyone, my name is Raymond, and this month I had the pleasure once again of working with Matthew Palahay on his Game of Month series. This month we developed and released Guardian's Call, which if you haven't played yet, I'll link it down in the description. It's a game about a teleporting knight equipped with a bow and arrow that has to take down enemies to open a magic gate. This month, once again, I was primarily responsible for designing and developing the character for this game, namely the knight you play as on screen. And in this video, I'd like to talk about my character art process and talk about a few things I learnt along the way. So without further ado, let's get into it. Usually Matt and I are a huge fan of the sci-fi genre, and we tend to style our games as such. This month we thought we'd try something a little different and push for a more fantasy medieval style. Now, I had very little experience in designing armor from that time period, so I made sure to use lots of reference material to guide my designs. And as always, I wanted to establish a strong color palette from the start. A palette that would complement the environment, yet not blend in too much. These colors proved difficult to establish at first, but then I had the idea of color picking from Matthew's existing environment he'd made. I used Adobe Color to pick the most contrasting colors from the ones in the environment and use them to color the knight's armor. After doing the initial sketch, we decided to rework the design a bit to accommodate for the gameplay as the armor I had initially drawn seemed a bit too heavy for the flipping and teleporting character we were planning to have. So I went and redesigned the armor to look a bit more lightweight and agile. After presenting these to Matthew, we decided ultimately to go with the sleek and lightweight armor, and then I went on to commence the modeling phase. So as always, I hopped right into Blender, but this time I took a few shortcuts to get the model out sooner. Having already made a humanoid mesh and armor from last month's game, Blade Construct, I decided to reuse what I could from that enemy soldier character and use it as a base for this month's game, as the designs weren't too different fundamentally. This left me with a generous amount of time to focus on the armor, rather than having to model the entire human underneath from scratch. And this also gave me additional time to experiment with later parts of the process. Last month I had used Substance Painter for the very first time, and it was an absolute pleasure to work with. The tools were powerful and easy to use. And this time I was excited to get to use Substance Painter once again to texture this character. However, last time Matt and I had a tough time implementing all of the textures for the soldier because each separate part of the body had its own unique material and texture maps to go along with them. As a consequence of that, when it came to importing everything into Unreal, we had quite a number of textures and materials to sort through. So to cause a few less headaches, I thought this time around I'd try and make use of the Material ID technique. This is something that most 3D programs are capable of, but I hadn't previously tried it out, and I thought with the extra time on my hands, I'd give it a go. For those that aren't familiar with Material IDs, it's a process similar to using masks in Photoshop. In the process of creating Material IDs, you create somewhat of a color map for your character, and each color will pertain to a different material to apply to the mesh. The end result of a map would look something like this, and it allows you to achieve a model that looks like it has a lot of different materials, but all combined into one. And I have to say, if you have not tried this technique before, you definitely should. It saves you a lot of time and effort, and it makes importing it into an engine a breeze. So let's walk through how I managed to do it. So I started the process off in Blender by applying different materials to different parts of the mesh. So for the helmet in particular, I applied the normal outer shell armor to the mouthpiece, and I applied a different material to the visor. For the rest of the body, I chose to apply a single material to the rest of the armor pieces, a separate material for the undersuit, and another separate material for the scarf. So in total, I had about four different materials at this point, and by the end of the process, I'd combine them all into one single material. Not only does this make implementation easier, but it's also better optimized for real-time rendering. In the next part of the process, you then have to apply a default color to each different material you had made. Now, it's very important that each color is drastically different from the others. This is because the material ID map will be used as a mask later on. And the idea is that each color is mapped to a different material to apply. So you don't want the colors to be too similar, otherwise you may end up with some overlapping materials. Or maybe you won't, I didn't have time to test that theory, but I assumed it would be safest to keep the colors as different as possible. In the next part of the process, I then went into Blender's image editor and baked out a map using the materials applied to the character. 
It then outputs the final material ID map, which you can then take into your texturing program. I then cleared all of the existing materials and applied a single material to the model to take to Substance Painter later on. I then imported this version into Substance along with the material ID map from before. This then allowed me to mask off different parts of the model and apply different layers to different parts. When it comes to making the material layers, I normally start with just a flat fill layer, picking colours from the original concept art. Once the colours are in place, I then go in and start adding some detail, and I make use of things like normal maps, occlusion maps, smart materials, and brushes. After fiddling around with some of these, I then end up with the final result, and then I take it off to Matthew to import into the game. And here we have it guys, this is Guardian's Call, with the character fully implemented. So in the game you can run around, and you can shoot this bow, which shoots an energy arrow, and you can also teleport, which is very useful for dodging. So Matt was responsible for implementing the skeleton and rig in the character, and applying the animations. And he also managed to get some cloth physics on his scarf, so as you can see if I turn the character, the cloth on the scarf will react. So there you have it, I won't show you guys any more from there, if you want to check it out for yourself, I have the link to the game in the description below. Be sure to try it out, I hope you guys enjoy it. So there you have my process for designing and developing the playable knight character from Guardian's Core. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more content like this on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and enable notifications so you don't miss the next devlog. If you're interested in the level design and programming, I'll link Matthew's channel down below. And as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to this month's top supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to support the production of these videos, you should consider becoming a Patreon. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.